At this testing site in San Jose, California, robots roam the floors, running 24-7, often without any human supervision. This is Fetch Robotics, a startup that's built around 100 robots, mostly deployed at numerous warehouses for clients such as global shipper DHL. Lead robotics engineer Russell Torres introduces me to their human-machine interface bots. So these are definitely fully autonomous. They're designed to work with humans, though, so they are very safe to, to work with. So they're not your typical kind of robot that you see in manufacturing facilities that are behind cages. Uh, they're really... Um, meant to augment the human workers so they're not by augment really... Taurus means freeing up people to get more done since they no longer have to push carts across the floors of massive warehouses some of the robots are also equipped with an array of RFID scanners that can read inventory barcodes nearly eight meters away all of the robots are equipped with obstacle avoidance systems which is extremely important to fetch robotics because when you're moving out and about in a warehouse you want to make sure everywhere you turn you're not risking your safety the smaller robots can carry 100 kilograms and the larger ones up to 1,500 kilograms. Fetch also builds robots with arms, about 50 of them so far, which are currently being used in academic institutions and innovation centers around the world for research only. In fact, OpenAI, a group partly funded by Tesla founder Elon Musk, has been reprogramming Fetch's robots with artificial intelligence software that's supposed to teach them to do household chores. I'm not convinced that in my lifetime there will be a robot made. We forget how long it takes. People feel like the iPhone, you know, has been here forever, but it actually hasn't. The first iPhone came out in 2007. Someone said something really uh, impactful to me once, which was, it takes 10 years to have an overnight success. CEO Melanie Wise remembers building her first robot with plywood when she was a teenager. A far cry from today. The two primary sensors that it uses are the 2D planar laser scanner, which is in this like gap here, and then uh, the 3D time of flight camera. And so we use that for doing collision avoidance and then helping the robot understand where it is in the world. A robot's place in the world is being hotly debated, but Wise views them as colleagues in a working relationship that's most productive when it's built upon trust. Mark New, CGTN, San Jose, California.